Good morning, welcome to Newswatch Today. I'm Emma Armstrong. And I'm Sadie Chisholm, filling in for Morgan Pagel. Deals are being struck between the UAE, Bahrain, and Israel. And two Ozark communities that are coming together for the benefit of others. Braden Nelson is here with your forecast, and I'm here for your latest in sports news. This is Newswatch Today. Thanks for joining us this morning. Right now we have Braden giving us a first look at the weather. Well, Emma, here's your first forecast of the day. So, so far, it's about 61 and pretty sunny right now. Uh, it might be just a little bit chilly just because of the lower temperature, but overall, it's quite sunny, uh, and the conditions are pretty, pretty average, pretty, uh, pretty mundane. And then later on, it's going to warm up to about 78 degrees, uh, and it's still going to stay sunny, but it's probably just going to be warm up. It's going to be warming up enough for you to notice the temperature. So you want to put, you want to take your light jacket off, probably put some sunglasses on, uh, and then later tonight you want, might want to put that light jacket back on again because it's going to be about 66 and clear tonight. So that's your first, first forecast for today. Thanks Brayden. I guess we will know more during your full forecast. Attorney Generals Eric Schmidt and Leslie Rutledge announced debt relief for former ITT students. When ITT made a deal with Peaks, a loan company after a filed bankruptcy investigation and a restriction to federal aid, students were coerced into taking loans from Peaks. The problem? Peaks loans had high interest that was due nine months later as opposed to the assumption of a federal loan being due six months after graduation. If they could not pay it, ITT threatened students with expulsion, often taking them out of their classes. One thing that Evangel students do not have to worry about is the cafeteria. Danielle Aubrey gives us an inside look as to why this is the case. Evangel, like many other schools at this time, has faced many challenges when it comes to protecting students from contracting the coronavirus. The director of EU Dining Services, Joey Roberts, elaborates on how they have been fighting against the virus. You can tell everyone has masks on, right? And then we have a special peroxide um, sanitation fluid that we use and everything's getting wiped out every 15 minutes. It has increased everyone's job, but that's not just dining, that's across campus. You know, we've had some substitutions made by our suppliers. The only thing that has really been, and, and we've ended up getting it, but a little stressful is hand sanitizer and gloves. The dining services do not stand alone in their efforts against this virus. The students' cooperation have aided and encouraged Roberts and her team. You know, we haven't really received a lot of feedback, negative or positive, but we've received a lot of thank yous. I was a little concerned that we would run out of seating or students would be standing in lines for a long time. And the first week we were open, I think the wait was about five minutes in line, but now everyone's learned where their groove is. All students, including those in isolation, are in good hands with the dining services team. Hopefully, whoever you talk to that's been in quarantine will say, yes, we're getting plenty of food because we are over portioning, just simply because it's only one trip through. We just appreciate the students so much. Everybody has been incredibly patient with this. We appreciate those patients that everyone's having with us so much. Just thank you guys for your patience. You know, any suggestions you have are always welcome. We want this to be the best experience you can ever have. With the Evangel staff and the students working in cooperation with each other, not much can stand in the way between Evangel and finishing up this school semester in person. Reporting for Newswatch Today, I'm Danielle Aubrey. Thanks, Danielle. The two rival Ozark towns, Windsor and Lincoln, are planning to team up for youth heart screenings. KY3 mentions that despite these two towns being football rivals, they are joining together to raise awareness about the hidden heart conditions. The Devons B organization held a heart screening event that resulted in doctors finding multiple Windsor students with heart problems. Lincoln and Windsor plan on having another heart screening event for the surrounding cities. A historical event takes place when Israel makes landmark deals with the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain. And President Trump hails this the dawn of a new Middle East, according to BBC. While President Trump is hoping other countries will follow suit, the Palestinians are unwilling while their conflict with Israel is not yet resolved. Many Arab, many Arab states, too, have boycotted Israel until Palestinian conflict has been settled first. 
The Japanese gaming company, Nintendo, recently announced that it is re-releasing the Game & Watch, the handheld sensation that put Nintendo on the map. According to CNN, Game & Watch consisted of 59 games and was first introduced in 1980 and produced until 1991. The updated Game & Watch has a, co a color LCD screen and a rechargeable battery with a USB-C connector. The updated version also has the ability to be an alarm clock where users have 35 different screensavers to choose from. The 40th anniversary edition of the Game & Watch will go on sale November 13th for a limited time. Coming up next, Sadie interviews the NACTUS member, Nathaniel Bennett. And a historical home is on display in Italy. All that and more after this. University of Missouri and Columbia takes their COVID-19 guidelines very seriously. Recently, two students were expelled and three others suspended due to not following the university's regulations. MU Chancellor and University System President says that the discipline was necessary. He said, we will not allow the few to ruin in-person learning for over 30,000 students. Rosa Parks' home is put on display in Naples, Italy on Tuesday, September 15th. Her niece, Rhea McCauley, saved the house from demolition during the 2008 financial crisis, according to Fox News and the BBC. This two-story building housed Rosa Parks and 17 of her family members after her defiance against discrimination in 1955. McCauley donated the house to artist Ryan Mendoza, who in 2016 dismantled and rebuilt it in his Germany studio before it was dis displayed in the courtyard of an 18th century royal palace. Now, Sadie interviews an Inactus member and resident assistant. Take it away. Thanks, Emma. Today we have with us Nathaniel Bennett. Nathaniel, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? What uh, grade are you in? Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, I'm a junior here at Evangel. Um, I'm resident assistant of Scott Third North this year. Um, I I'm a business management major here at Evangel. Um, and love it. Oh, that's great. I love that. So can you tell us a little bit about all of the extracurriculars that you do here on campus? Yeah, so some stuff I'm involved in. Um, I'm involved in Anactus, which is the business group here on campus. And we do various community outreaches, like um, we'll help with Conway of Hope. And we'll have some other great ministry opportunities around. Um, I'm also involved with the resident program. I'm a resident assistant. And so I'm in charge of some guys in Scott um, so it's my job to be there for them and help them out if they need anything. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So can you tell us a little bit about your role in Enactus? Yeah, so this year, um, and that Enactus is going to look a little different with all the guidelines, um, but I'm a birthday kits team member. And so I'm in charge of making birthday kits for people when it's their birthday. That's so cool. Yeah. I wish you could have done that for my birthday. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just teasing. <laughs> How did you know you wanted to join Enactus? Um, well, when I got to Evangel uh, many, many years ago, so two years ago, <laughs> I was kind of just thrown into the program, and I'm really glad that I was. It was one of those happy accidents in my life, I feel like, of like, oh, is this something I want to do? And I just decided to do it, and I loved it ever since. And so I've been in it for now two years, going on three years, um, and I've gotten to do some pretty amazing things. Um, I've gotten to tour Hallmark, going to compete in Kansas City, um, pretty much just minister to so many different people in the community and it's been great. That's great. Yeah. So what about being an RA? What made you want to be an RA? Yeah, so um, I just love the guys on my floor. Um, I love the guys in Scott and I just decided like, hey, how can I help and give back some of my time to some of these younger kids coming in, or kids, some younger <laughs> students coming in um, and I felt like RA was something that the Lord was putting on my heart to do and so I pursued it and I eventually got the position and it's been great. So. That's so cool. So what would you say is the most challenging part about juggling all of these activities that you're in? Yeah, so this is a big one for me. Um, when I came to Evangel, I played college basketball, and so I feel like through that I've learned uh, time management. That's been huge, um, especially this year with all the stuff going on with uh, COVID rules and RA and just craziness happening all around. Um, I think I've just learned to find rest and be intentional with my time. 
Um, there's been a lot of things that I've had to like say no to or choose to be with the guys on my floor or whatever the situation may be, do homework mm -hmm. um, and be really intentional with my time. That way, whenever I am spending time, it matters and it counts. Yeah, that's really good. So what would you say, um, how do you think Enactus will help you with your future career? So I was thinking, um, Enactus is really business oriented. Um, I want to be an airline pilot. That's the ultimate goal. And so I don't feel like I think I've learned a lot of life lessons through it that have helped, um, but not anything directly per se. Mm -hmm. um, but there's some really great stuff that I've learned about like working with a team and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that's about all the time that we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us, Thanks Nathaniel. Well, Brayden, fall is just around the corner. Maybe some cooler temperatures as well? Maybe just a little bit, but those are kind of reserved for the nighttime. Uh, as for now, it's pretty sunny. It's about 61, so a little bit cool. Uh, then it's going to warm up a bit later today with about 78, maybe reaching a little bit of uh, a little bit of 80. So you might be able to wear your sunglasses. And then later tonight, it's going to drop back down into about 60 degrees, and it's going to uh, stay clear. But you'll see the rest of that in the full forecast. KY3 recently announced that the Galois Theater will be auctioning off posters from years of the shows. The Galois Theater was assembled around, has assembled around 99 posters and majority of those have been signed by the artists. The online auction was created to help fund the theater during this time of shutdown. To help support the Galois Theater or just purchase a poster from the, your favorite artist, this is your way to help and support the local theater and own a piece of history. An 80-year-old British hiker went missing for three days when he was separated from his group in a hailstorm. He then showed up at his own press conference just as his family members were organizing a search party to find him. According to Fox News, a video was posted on Facebook by the Tan Hill Inn. The video shows the octogenarian Harry Harvey being brought into the pub by rescue officers. He was embraced and immediately loved on by his family. He is not the only one to be embraced this week, and I am certainly embracing the cooler temperatures this week. How about it, Brayden? Well, we're getting, we're getting a little bit into the cooler temperature, but not too much. Let me show you today's forecast. So today, you can expect a little bit of the sunny weather. Uh, today, it's about 61 right now and a little bit sunny. Uh, so you might still want to have a light jacket right now. Uh, but then later on, it'll pretty much warm up uh, to about 78 degrees. We might just peak at 80. Um, but either way, it's going to be sunny, and all the rest of the conditions will pretty much stay the same. Uh, later on tonight, expect the temperatures dipping into a little bit cooler weather uh, as we go to 66 and it'll still be a little bit clear so you might want to pop back on that jacket. Let's see what else we got going on weather wise. So we have we have the radar coming on so let me move out of the way there. So we have a little bit of green kind of approaching, approaching our area. No need to worry about that. We don't really have any rain coming uh, to us today or rather this week. Uh, that's just a little bit of a dew settling and any of that will be gone by, uh, by noon. Uh, also, the national forecast, as you can see, we don't have too much hitting us right now. Uh, we're overall kind of in a low right now. Uh, so like it might be just a tad windy, not too much. Uh, we're seeing those cooler temperatures in the evening, but overall not too much. And you can see again, uh, we're, we're kind of like in the middle-ish. Uh, it'll cool later on in this month, uh, but it's kind of just kind of tossing back and forth in the middle so far for our national highs and lows. Uh, six day forecast, let's check it out. Uh, so first we have basically, all around, we kind of have a low of like, um, we have uh, like 68 and like 82 as our, as our highs. Overall, you can see all those little suns. Uh, that means it's going to be sunny all week. So make sure to bring your sunglasses and pump Mr. Blue Sky in your ears. Uh, so basically, we have pretty much like a high of 82 all week and a low of 51. So again, it's going to be more of like today, but kind of just growing more intense and intense. So you might want to keep it get in the morning, put your sunglasses on in the afternoon, and then put a jacket on later in the evening. What you can expect for your weather this week. Thanks, Brayden. Up next, we have the latest in sports with Sadie Chisholm. You won't want to miss it. Stick around.
The new semester is well underway and the freshman students are starting to adjust to the new college experience. We asked sophomores and upperclassmen what tips they had for freshmen when it comes to dorm life and meeting new people. They emphasize the importance of being a part of a community. You should always keep your door open because whenever you keep your door open, people stop by. They say hi. You make friends easier and you're less lonely. So always keep your door open. I would say to get involved with the people, community, and events on your floor. If you are a freshman, get involved with your floor's activities and events, however small they are. It is the best way to make friends fast. Evangel Sports is well underway this semester. How do we do this week, Sadie? Yeah, our teams are looking really good, Emma. It's awesome to see. Our men's soccer team barely fell short to the Central Baptist Mustangs on the road, 1-2 as the final score. Evangel's men and women cross-country teams traveled to Cotty College Invitational and found great success. Shane Burns led the men's team to victory. Five men Crusaders runners finished among the top eight runners in the draw. Emily Standage made the women's race interesting. She was able to take the lead in the last few hundred meters of the women's race. Their coach was excited to have some experienced runners back this year, plus he found great joy in the wonderful start to the season. The volleyball team hosted the annual Evangel Classic last weekend. On Friday, the team opened with William Penn, beating them three to zero. Though Evangel swept them, each set was a nail biter. Coach Mary Coach Mary Whitehead was pleased with Evangel's defense as it carried over into great offense. Saturday, the Crusaders took on St. Louis College of Pharmacy, beating them in the fifth set. Russell led the team with 42 digs, giving the Evangel's junior All-American a new personal record. In the last game of the Classic, the Crusaders won all three sets against Central Baptist, leaving them with a loss and a long ride home. The women's soccer team also took down the Central Baptist Mustangs. The, Cru the Crusaders scored their first two points in the first half, but they didn't stop there. Evangel found a rhythm and scored five more points in the second half. The women's soccer team beat the Mustangs 7-0. The Crusaders women's soccer team will challenge William Baptist in their next game on Tuesday the 15th. The NFL is finally back in action. The Chiefs were able to show the Houston Texans who was boss around this place. They beat the Texans 34 to 20. This week, the Steelers and the Giants play along with the Titans versus the Broncos. That's all for your sports this week. Back to you, Emma. Thanks, Sadie. When we come back, a selfie taking monkey and how pelicans could assist humans with flight. Stay tuned. Researchers at Airbus Up Next, an aircraft technology company, have found a feathery way to save energy for commercial airlines, according to CNN. By taking inspiration from birds' V formation, Airbus expects to save between 5% and 10% of fuel on long-haul trips. By observing tame pelicans, they are able to find an advantage to flying in this V formation. A Malaysian man reports his phone missing and ends up finding it a day later with monkey photos and videos in the jungle behind the house. BBC News reported that Zachrids Razi posted the footage on Twitter which included a monkey appearing to try and eat the phone. The student does not know how and when his phone was stolen. However, his father noticed a monkey in their yard and when he dialed the number he had heard a noise from the jungle. The phone was discovered in a muddy pile of leaves underneath a palm tree. Zachary su suspects that the monkey climbed into the house through his window and took the phone. If I had to worry about monkeys trying to steal my phone here in Springfield, I'd go bananas. <laughs> I think I'd be pretty upset if that happened to me too. Uh, anyways, here's our final forecast, basically uh, seeing what we got going for the week. So overall, we can see it's pretty sunny throughout the week, uh, so you want to make sure to bring your cool shades. Uh, and basically, it'll be pretty much warmer, uh, warmer in the afternoons and cooler in the evenings. When, as you see, there's a high of 82 for the week, and there's a low of about 50. So it'll kind of get cool, then a little bit warmer in the afternoon, and then cooler, uh, 
cooler in the evening. So that's what we got going on for this week. How about that monkey story today? So crazy. <laughs> I, I wouldn't even know what to do with myself. I wouldn't either. I can't believe they could hear it in the jungle too. That was nuts. Man, I can't even think if that would happen to me. That's all the time we have for this week. I am Emma Armstrong. And I'm Sadie Chisholm filling in for Morgan Pagel. This has been Newswatch Today. Join us again next week.